Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. I'm going to show you all how to make blue lines. Right, so this is a David Finch page. It's at a decent resolution. Actually, this is a pretty high res file. And uh, so to make a blue line, what you do is you're going to need Photoshop for sure. And uh, I can always do a Clip Studio one later. I do actually have that. So, okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is you want to make sure the file is RGB to begin with. So as you see here, you see the blue, that means it's RGB. If you go to your drop down menus, you have modes, grayscale, CMYK, blah, 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 blah. So if your file originally comes in as grayscale, you're gonna wanna turn it to RGB color. And it'll still look like this. It's not gonna magically turn it into color, but um, you know, for people that don't understand Photoshop, I know that some of this stuff will seem kind of basic, but uh, I'm gonna go back to my original file. Um, once you turn that to RGB color, then you can start with a blue line. So what? there's a couple of ways that you can make blue lines. I actually have saved my actions. So in here, I have turning pages blue um, and then turning pages blue part two. Because what I end up doing is pencilers will send me files that look like this. And then I actually create a new template. So I go into my new thing. I go 600 DPI inches. 17 by 11 because I'm going to take this to actual my printer and then I want RGB color. So file new document 11 by 17 600 resolution. You can do 400. It'll it'll be fine. Most printers probably print at 400. Um, but the printer that I use at the print shop that I use is like an $80,000 printer, so it can handle 600 DPI. So that's my new file. Um, you can take the paint bucket. If you, I have it set up to this because I've been doing some stuff, um, but I can take the paint bucket tool and turn it black or turn it white or really turn it any color. But anyway, so the first thing I do is I take this because no matter what size this is, you're going to be printing it on 11 by 17 sheet of paper more likely. So I take this, so I'm going control A or command A if you're in um, on a Mac and then control X. I'm cutting it out. I'm gonna drop it in here, so Command V. All right, so you can see that this is actually a pretty high res file. 600 DPI template, Where wherever I got this, um, it's not a bad size file. Sometimes you'll drop a file in here and it will be very, very small, um, which means when you turn it into uh, your blue line, it may not be super high res, but this is a decent size file. Okay, and then Transform, so Control T. All right, now I'm holding down the Shift key and I'm going to grab this corner. Do you see when I go near these boxes, it activates them? What I can do right now is I can turn it like this. All right. And then if I hit escape, it will line it up, at least for me. Um, and then uh, so control T, I'm, I'm going to grab this arrow. I'm hitting my left mouse and I'm holding shift and I start to pull. And what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to fill my template with a decent size scan and again if you're using a really small or low res file it may look okay in photoshop when you print it out it's gonna be very dull okay so then i got that now my shortcut key that i've created is Control f which flattens the image um you can also go up here and go to edit or oh, hold on let me uh, go back layer flatten image and that will flatten oh so it is uh well it's showing my hot key i'm not 100 sure control f is but anyway so i flatten it so this is only one layer now i'm going to go and uh, adjust color balance all right so there's shortcut keys for this but start to take it to cyan and move it all the way this way and then hit okay and then image adjust color balance and there's other ways you can do this but all right I'm going to get a really, really blue. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control uh, levels. All right, now I'm going to grab this eyedropper. And, and while I'm grabbing this, this will turn anything that I touch into white. This will turn anything I touch into black. And this, I don't even know what it does, a gray point. But I want, I want to make sure that this paper itself is white. So watch this when I click this. It lightens it up and it takes out a lot of the schmutz. All right, I'm going to hit OK, but I'm going to do it again. So control levels, because um, there's still a lot of blue in Superman's head right there. That looks better. All right, it's still kind of greenish, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go hue or image, adjust, and then hue saturation. 
and I'm going to go to lightness because it's a little dark. And watch this. All right, so it starts to make it where if you threw this in another program, it will look pretty good, all right? And then image, adjust, color balance. Let's take it a little more blue. It's starting to look pretty good. Like That's not a bad blue line right there. Now, this is a little dark for printing out. I'm not sure how it's going to read on your screen, but, but this would be a little muddy to work over. So sometimes what I'll do is this seems a little light. Like if I keep lightening it, this is going to be too light. But this area, David drew a little dark. So I'm taking the lasso. I just pressed L and it starts to highlight these guys. I'm doing this with a mouse right now. I do have um, a tablet thing. I'm going to take this. I'm just clicking with the left mouse and I'm outlining this. And I'm going to lighten this area just a little. So... I went all the way around and I just connected this thing. I'm going to go to image, adjust, or we'll, we'll do it here. Uh, the hue saturation again and lightness. I like this better. It seems to control the values better. I'm going to just lighten this area a little bit more. It doesn't, the thing is, is because you're inking over it, it doesn't matter if there's like a discrepancy between how, how um, like, a, like a line is created because this has been pulled lighter. So really, this is it. This is the blue line. And you could kick this into clip studio and ink it digitally or you could print this out and um you know ink it on a nice piece of artboard i generally save them for my printer as pdf files so i will go file save as uh whatever finch inking demo and um, yeah, and then I'm saving it as a PDF. And then you just leave all this alone, click save. And then when this is done, you're good to go. Now, another thing that I do when I'm printing out traditional boards is I actually will print out a black and white version of this, um, kind of as high res as possible. So a lot of times I'll go back to the original image, AX, I'm just cutting it out. I'll go image mode, grayscale. And then I'm going to dump this here. And then Control T, I do that stretch function. And I'm just grabbing the corners. As long as you hit Shift, it will pull the piece out uh, in proportion. Because if you don't, and I just hit T and grab it, it's like I can do all kinds of weird things. I can even reverse it. So you don't want that. And uh, I mean, you could, but uh, yeah. So Control T is transform. I hit the Shift left mouse key. And I pull from the corner, pull from the corner, and it will stay in a proportion. And then I will click Enter, and that puts it down. And then I go Control-F, flatten the image so that I'm not printing layers. And I will save this as Finch Inking Demo underscore black and white. I usually will uh, define them by Inking Demo Blue, black and white. My printer knows the blue goes on the good artboard. The grayscale one, black and white, goes on crappy board. So that's really it. And then again, what I've done, fancy rich here, is as long as I have this in RGB color, I can stick this in and hit. And then when I'm turning my pages blue, watch what it's going to do. I have this set up where it's going to remove all the blue. Because I don't like to print my blue lines with the crop stuff around it. Do you see that? It took out everything. And I'll clean up this line right here. Because I'm a perfectionist and I hate stuff that looks weird what i did there is do you see how this is black and white so i'm taking the marquee tool m or control m i guess is marquee and then um control delete and it what it does is it will drop in that underneath color so marquee tool which is this up here or control m grab all this and then i hit control delete and it will drop that white in. And if I had it switched and I wanted to do black borders around this, I could go control delete. And because that bottom color is black, it does that. So I could put some pretty sick black borders around this. Um, and as long as your printer is good, I mean, you bet you would be better off doing this in ink, but just in theory, control delete, I can drop. That's why, like, like people think I'm like a tra traditional artist. I'm telling you, I know my way around Photoshop really, really well. 
next video I'll show you how to set up actions. It's a really, really simple thing. Um, and uh, hopefully that helps you. It's not that hard of a process. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, best of luck with it. And if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.